Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Got another video in the series on subwoofers. I thought I would focus on test tracks this time. And I'm not a big fan of test tracks, base heavy test tracks to test the subwoofer specifically because I think a great subwoofer like the Rail 25 and some of the other ones I've had in the past, you can hear the improvement on any song because these kind of subwoofers will increase the entire frequency range and spectrum you'll just hear it you just have to hear it to believe it i can't even describe how and why it does impact everything but i'll give you an analogy like when a cymbal hits when a, a drumstick hits a cymbal there's that if in live there's that little bit of thud you know you think of a cymbal hit as very high frequency dominated only but you hear that little thud and with a great subwoofer that can pressurize the room and really deliver, uh, move the air, you pick that up now in the music. When somebody starts speaking and her voice or his voice starts to blow air out of their mouth and sometimes that little pucker has a little bit of a bass impact and those subtle nuances um, you start noticing in every song. But here's the problem with a big subwoofer like this in a small room or in any room really. Uh, playing bass heavy tracks is that you're going to have resonances, things that resonate. And I just did a video prior to this about how you fix the resonances. But I really didn't get into how do you discover the resonances first? Are you going to just constantly week after week find new things? So what I did is I put together a playlist and you could kind of screenshot this or pause um, and look at these tracks because what I'd like you to do if you want to do a test uh, even with your main speakers you can do this for finding resonances but play these songs and try to get to about 90 dB plus uh, SPLs in your room because uh, some things are not going to excite at a low volume but you these are kind of tracks you're going to want to hear loud anyway when the bass kicks in it's part of the fun of some of these tracks so play these at 90 dB and if, see if you can get through at least the first 10. That's my goal, to get through these 10 without anything in the room resonating. And let me tell you, don't get frustrated or, or uh, discouraged. Everybody has it. I've been in mega dollar rooms that they don't even get past this first track. And that's why I've got Money by Cardi B up here first. You've seen me do a video exclusively for this song because... It's a great reference track for certain things. I can hear in the very first note of this song what type of subwoofer the person's using and how it's set up and if they've controlled resonances in their room. It's just so distinct, um, and I've just gotten used to that. And it also lets me, it's a litmus test for me of what I like and don't like from the very first note. So try that track again 90 db plus see how that pressurizes your room and how much more you enjoy this with or without a subwoofer um and how soft that sounds and how, versus how hard deep tight fast it should sound that's what you're kind of going to look for what i also do is flip flop between tracks go to like a regular eva cassidy you wouldn't think she'd be a bass track but Again, try this track. You'll pick out nuances. There's some low bass information here that even in acoustic and um, more traditional music that's not bass machine dominated, uh, you can get really good test of how good the sub is if it can play both. So, uh, and then I flip back. Mickey Hart, uh, Planet Drum. This is another type of drum machine type sound that can... Um, uncover certain resonances that other freak other ones don't because it's a different frequencies uh, and a different type of bass texture pitch definition everything tone Shenandoah is a big orchestra so orchestras have that part in the Shenandoah where you, it's super low uh, percussive um, kind of omni mic recording so it's a little bit different than studio type uh, recordings here. So this is another type of test to help you uh, uncover resonances and test the subwoofer. Bubbles is a very gimmicky track. Um, it actually has a lot of um, digital clipping uh, if you play it in Rune. And that's another reason why you want to want kind of cool servers like I make and use Rune because you can adjust uh, for digital clipping and stuff like that. 
uh, if you're buying a server that doesn't have Rune and doesn't allow for you to adjust for digital clipping, you're going to be listening to a lot of clipping on this song. And also this one here, Distal by Tipper. Another super fun song um, to test bass. Baba O'Reilly is a standing bass, you know, acoustic bass. Um, great for testing bass. That's an acoustic instrument, realism. Again, flip-flopping between kind of process bass, drum machine bass, low bass, and then a real instrument. This is the kind of stuff that will test your system, test your room for resonances, because all of these have different harmonic structures and, and basically, um, I guess harmonic structure is not really the right word, but in terms of pitch definition and, and frequencies and what it excites. This is the one that is the big litmus test as well. If I had to pick two tracks, litmus test for me, uh, in terms of does somebody control the resonances in their room or not? Mon uh, probably bad guys, number one. Um, let's see, this is kind of distorted bass, but there's a big difference between recorded distorted bass, you can tell the difference, and your actual subwoofer or bass drivers on your speaker having trouble with it. So this is a great tr test track to um, see if this sounds right or wrong. And you'll know the difference, and you'll know if anything's vibrating in your room. This one caused me a lot of headaches in my room. Uh, I even had to change out my light fixture, as I mentioned in the previous vi uh, video. Uh, poem of Chinese drums, different drums, huge drums. Again, in acoustic, omni mic type environment, great way to test a subwoofer for that type of bass. No Sanctuary here is a very common one that's in... Uh, Chris Jones in a lot of the shows, but I like this version, this Marion Herzog version better on the album Rebel. It's much faster, higher pace to the the beat in the back and can uh, test your um, subwoofer speed and uh, the rhythm. I just find it a better test track and I kind of enjoy it than the, versus the slow Chris Jones version. Fly of the Cosmic Hippo is another common track with bass. Uh, since you're probably so familiar with it, put it in there. And I don't think this will resonate too much in your room. You'll notice that tracks that are played at these shows a lot are the ones that don't really resonate as much as these other ones because that's why they play them. They don't want to expose weaknesses in the room that they couldn't address. Man in the Long Black Coat. Again, a little bit easier, but good test of bass um, for that style. Then you got Ray Brown, who's great. I got two of his tracks. One is Alive and this one here. So you can get some more acoustic. And then another orchestra in the Hall of the Mountain King, Edward Grieg. I think that's how you pronounce it. Anyway, look these up. It's very easy to find on uh, Rune title uh mama said very good limit to your love very dynamic very bass heavy at certain points and will definitely rattle things in your room if you don't have it uh, tied down tight <laughs> so this is a great track to play over and over and find those problem areas and address it from the video i mentioned before slave to a rhythm grace jones again understand the texture of that bass the, even the voice there's a lot of low bass content to it. Um, so th that's a great use of uh, the subwoofer in a, a vocal scenario that'll help you. Um, Roadhouse and Audio uh, Automobiles by Chris Jones. Another good one that has bass. Now these other ones, okay, be very careful. <laughs> They're not lying when they say danger, ultra low bass. Um, when you start getting to these bass tracks, make sure you've addressed the issues up here first and you don't have a sub that's struggling with these tracks because if it's struggling with these tracks and your, your speakers are struggling here and your room is rattling and you haven't addressed those, you're going to have a nightmare when you get to these. This is for ultra um, high level sub setup. This is the big time litmus test of how well your room can handle low frequencies because this these things will just cover every little nuance resonate everything and if you're playing these at 90 db you know you'll probably those frequencies are gonna go right through your walls into your neighbor's house so uh be very careful with these um from both <laughs> annoying other people and also from the standpoint of 
not um, damaging speakers if you're having trouble up here. Take care of these first. And of course, I had to throw in back that ass up, okay? You just got to play that every day like I do. All right, so hopefully this is uh, helpful. I'll be back with uh, more in this series as we go. Stay tuned.